What's up guys, Joe at Momentum Works. Today we're talking about how whole set VGT turbos interchange between applications, part numbers, and actuators. Stay tuned. Wasn't planning on doing a video today, but something really pissed me off, so here we are. Today's video is sponsored by Bush because it's the day before Thanksgiving and I think you're supposed to drink, so drink up, boys. Okay, let's get into it. So, whole set VGT turbos, they use a lot of the same frame sizes. So, you have your HE300 series, your HE400 series, your HE500 series. Your 300 series is going to be found in like your 6.7 liter Cummins, which you'll find in your Ram trucks. A lot of medium duty stuff as well. Your 400 series, you'll find that on some medium duty, but you'll see that on like the ISX, uh, Pack Arm X13. Depending on the generation of a Pack Arm X13, you might also have a 500 series. Now, there's a zillion part numbers, and you never know which ones interchange, and the prices can be drastically different, and I think that's bullshit. So I'm going to tell you what interchanges, what doesn't interchange, and how to tell what you have and what would be compatible for your specific application and truck. So what we have here are two virtually identical turbos. The one on the left is a reman, an independent reman, and the one on the right is a brand new whole set, or what was a brand new whole set because it's been used at this point. That's how we got here. And... These have different part numbers, and these two have different part numbers for a good reason, because this unit utilizes an actuator that works with a 12-volt electrical system, and this one utilizes an actuator that's good for a 24-volt system. So other than that, these turbos are basically identical, and I know that because I took them all apart and I took all the measurements of all the critical dimensions. So in an application like this, this turbo was about, I don't know, half the price of this turbo, no, reman aside and everything, new to new, reman to reman, whatever. And I think a lot of that has to deal with that 24 volt actuator. So hypothetically, you could buy this cheaper turbo, put a 24 volt actuator on it, and you would have the same thing. Now let's take a deeper look, just so we can make sure that these turbos are identical. So let's start with a quick visual. Right off the bat, let's look at the flange where it mounts to the manifold. These are identical. Let's look at the bearing housing. You see your oil feed port and your speed sensor input? Oil feed port, speed sensor input, compressor where it goes to the air cleaners, identical. Outtake going to the charge air cooler, identical. And I'll just cut to the chase here, guys. I put these turbos on the same truck and ran them, and there was no issue. They all bolt up and function the same, minus the actuator. Here's the only discrepancy I found, which might be a manufacturing discrepancy or might even just be my own measuring because I use a measuring tool from the dollar store because I'm cheap. The inducer on the compressor wheel was 62 millimeters. Overall diameter was 92 and a half. And then the exhaust side was 67 and 75. The only difference is on the uh, exducer or the overall dimension of the wheel, I got 72 on one turbo versus 75. Three millimeters really isn't going to make a difference on this VGT turbo, but it is worth noting. This three millimeters might be, um, you know, the fact that they only had certain turbine wheels when these turbos were assembled, or it might actually be a difference, or it might have been me measuring wrong, but three millimeters is not going to make a difference, guys. One other thing I'd like to point out about this that I always find that's interesting is you'll see that this compressor housing is stamped MAC, and you'll see that this compressor housing, it's been, you know, sanded off. And that's because when whole set makes these for the manufacturer, they get the tooling done with the manufacturer's name, like Mac. But when a whole set sells these into the aftermarket, they're too cheap to retool. So they just get these compressor covers done and then they sand off the logo so that they can be sold in the aftermarket. Guys, this has been done for a long time with all the manufacturers. So I always try to wrap these videos up the same way. Why should you care? Well, first and foremost, you might be able to get a cheaper turbo. Second off, with all this COVID nonsense and things being stocked out and not being able to get parts, just because your specific part number is out of stock doesn't mean you can't get a turbo. You likely can get a turbo that'll be a direct bolt on, or maybe you'll just have to switch the actuator from a 12 volt to a 24 volt. Or there's always the option too that your number's just been superseded. Now, what we do here is we try to consolidate as many numbers as we can. So a lot of our aftermarket VGT turbos, we're able to consolidate hundreds of part numbers into one because of the fact that there's not a whole lot of difference between them and the differences are negligible. And if we sell them without an actuator, then that, you know, again, alleviates a bunch of issues because a lot of that issue comes between 12 and 24 volt actuators. So we do our best here to kind of help you guys out. I hope that this information was helpful to you and kind of explains a little bit about what we do. And sometimes when push comes to shove, if we don't know what turbo you have, 
you know, if whole set's bending us over for the part, that's why we end up having to bend you guys over for it. But if it's something that we're familiar with, and luckily we have so many turbos here, we can take stuff apart and look at it and take measurements and figure out, okay, these are consolidation or these are something that, you know, are equivalent swaps so that you can get back on the road. So guys, uh, whole set's a great company. I'm not trying to, you know, dog on them. You know, I'm sure they have the reason they're a big company. They can't do the things that a small company can do where they take apart and interchange and yada, yada, yada. So I get on a dealership standpoint, they put all these different part numbers and it can be confusing for the end user, but it makes sense for them. But I'm here trying to help out the little guy. So, you know, we're going to do what we can here to consolidate some numbers and make this make sense for you. So guys, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. It is the day before Thanksgiving. So happy Turkey Day. And, uh, you know, we're leaving early today. We're going to get some good food. We're going to get some barbecue. And we're going to get out of here. So drink some beer. Put your cousin in a headlock. Don't beat up your uncle. Love you. Bye.